as usual, with Wu Sabat, the first thing we do is to try and break down the word, right? So when you look at a word, religion, right? You have to remember that, like I always say, with words, they have a spelling, they have a tone, and, you know, you can look at it from the etymology, but when you say religion, you can really hear rely, yeah, rely on the, this is a J, jinns, yeah, and in Arabic, the jinns are these disagreeable entities. You can also hear legion, yeah, legion, and if you go to the Bible, you can look at the word legion, and that's a, a B and he says, my name is Legion. So when you start to break religions down, what you're finding is that religions are like a club. Yeah, a club. Meaning that a group of people that believe or accept the same thing belong to a religion. And what is a club? A club is something you use to beat somebody over the head with, right? Like a club. Now, when you go to a club, as in somewhere where you go to party, right? Party. There's a method to the madness. You're looking at part, right? So people that get together and believe in one thing are part of a religion and they accept the same things and if you don't belong to this allegiance or you don't give your allegiance to the religion then you're not a part of the club and party is where you go to a party and music that is playing in the party so you get like you know the, the frequencies that are beating you in the head because you're just hearing like the music constant in your head and it's about Party, so it's all about a division, so part as in divisive or division, all right? So why are there so many religions? There are so many religions because it's a belief system and each person or each religion relies or gives allegiance, yeah? Because when you say, again, allegiance, yeah, you're giving your allegiance if I'm spelling that correctly, right? Allegiance to these religions and to these entities that you're worshipping or in the religion you're giving your reverence to. And so, what is religion, right? With every religion, there's some type of deity. Look at the word, die again, right? Deity, or we say God right? And then within that, you will have a book, yeah, that they claim that comes from this God. And then you always have an opponent to God, right? Because they make God look like he's the hero because you will have an opponent who they will say is the devil, right? Let's say, the devil, or shaitan, depending on which religion you're coming from. So there's God and there's the opposite side, and we will say good, and they say bad. Because without having the two sides, right, without having these two sides, there will be no need for the other. But in science, we will say positive and negative. The, the trick is, that with each religion, they try to convince you that the hero is their deity or God, right? Then you will have the players who are humanity. And so these are the three components that make up your religion, yeah? And this God has to have some type of representative, yeah, who is the hero. 
So when we look at when we look at each one of the religions, so we say, all right, first question. How or where did the God or this deity come from? Because it just pops out of nowhere because the only time or the first time you come across this, this being, this deity, right, it's in the book. So without the book, how would you know about this God or this deity. So you say, okay, what are the first books? And if you're dealing with religion, you would go, okay, the youngest religion is Islam, right? Being 1,400 years old, 1,400 years old. So let's put, let's put a little timetable there. So you got, we've got Islam, which is, 1400 years old, right? So you got Islam, then you got 2000 years ago. All of these are AD, by the way, AD, which would be Christianity, yeah? Let's say Christianity, Christ. And then when you go back, you go to like, 6,000 years ago, again, this is dealing with what we'll call, um, say, Judaism. All right. ISM. Judaism. All right. So that's 6,000 years. But they will tell you that you've got a scientific world, let's say science, because science also have because why are we even talking about the, the dates? Because we're trying to get to the beginning. Where did this, where did this God, whether it's God, or right, let's say Islam, you have God will be Allah. In Christianity, you know, that's going to be many names. We say, let's say Elohim, you know, Yahweh, Way, etc. In Judaism, again, um, it's going to be the same, going back to like, this is more dealing with, um, again, we can say the same names, Elohim, Yahweh, Adonai, there's so many names, yeah, Adonai. Um, and then with science, they go beyond 6,000 years because they're dealing with, let's say, millions, millions and billions of years ago. Because with science, science deals with evidence, facts, finding, confirmations, right? And religion, right? Religion deals with belief. Um, so all of these three, obviously, you can even go, you could even go back to, I, I kind of skipped, but let's say you had Hinduism, um, you could have Hin Hinduism, you know, Buddhism, etc., etc., that predate the monotheistic religions. So the point is, which God was first? And when you go as far back as you can go and you get to the scientific world or to the science, it's like, okay, each God has a hero. In Islam, that's going to be Muhammad. Yeah? In Christianity, that's going to be Jesus. In Judaism, that's going to be Moses. Yeah, and oh yeah, I kind of left out. So you even got like the Egyptians, the Sumerians. So I'm just writing them here. Egyptian. Sumerians. Zoo Aztecs. Zoo. And I hope you guys are doing research because it's about, you know, you researching and finding out Things. So, as you can see, there are so many religions, and so I said, you have a hero, right? Each one of these heroes, so if you're watching a movie, it's like everyone is trying to outdo the other. So, there are so many religions because the religion is based on faith and you being controlled 
and you being in a situation where you don't know what you're talking about. Because if I said to you, who created you? A lot of the times, people are going to say, you know, God, Allah, um, all these deities, right? But if I say, do you get a picture of them in your mind? Do you see them? Can you actually... Who's Allah? Who is Yahweh? Who is God? Who is all these names? You don't. But if I asked you and I said that the creator, because that's the word a lot of people use, they say the creator, because they're saying that someone or something is their creator. Yeah? If I said your parents are your creator, can you see them in your head? Like, you know what your mum looks like, you know what your father looks like. Even if you've never met them before, there could be a picture or your relative will be able to tell you, like, this is what your parents look like. So your creator or the God that created you would be your, your parents. Even though parent means you're only renting them, you're only renting them for a, a specific time to come through, to come here. So going back to that question about why are there so many religions, it's because different people are trying to take control of your life and tell you that you should believe this or believe that. And so when it comes to the problems on the planet, it's mainly caused by each one of these trying to be the hero or the star of the of the movie because when you look at life life is like a movie because if you didn't have god and you didn't have the devil they they wouldn't be good or bad because how do you know to be good if you've never seen or know what bad is so these two sides are just when you get into the science they're dealing with positive and negative forces which everyone has to have because it's a polarity of because whatever you have it will go from one state and will end up to the other state so for example if you start from something cold you can go so cold that you get to a point where it the cold is so cold that it can actually burn you we call it frostbite yeah so you go from cold and then you get to hot. You go from what people call night, you end up with day. Um, so there's always this line and a middle point. And if the line carried on going, it will meet back with itself. So what religions do is they play on the fact that you have both natures within you. And if you don't know that that's dealing with the science of positive and negative because when we go to the oldest which will be egypt right this line deals with what we call atum right and then you have atun and you have amun right the reason this is very important because i'm showing you how the religious world right especially the monotheistic religions you know islam christianity and judaism they get that story or everything from the egyptian deities this is why at the end of their prayers they all say amen amen or umain yeah and so, one, the Egyptian one is a real story because it deals with real people, you know, and there's a part which most don't talk about, which is what people refer to as the Black Sun, yeah? And this is where Egypt refers to as Anun. So, the Sumerian got their story from the Egyptian story that Egyptian story became the story that you have in Christianity of God, 
the father, yeah, um, Mary, which would be, you know, tying into the Egyptian deity of Isis, um, Osiris, and Haru, all right? So they say Osiris, Osiris, Osiris. If you go and check out the story of Osiris, Isis, and what well, they say, Horus. But each one of these is a triad name, so you would get like, I, Osiris is also Usir, or Asa, or Asaru, Asaru. I know I'm writing it quick. Isis becomes Ashtat, or Arashtat, Arash. I'm hoping you're going to do some research. And Horus becomes, um, or from Hara, Hara, or Haru, or they say Har, right? So this Egyptian story, check out the Egyptian stories of what happened with Osiris and Seth. And this is the story that has then been translated over and over and over again to the point where now everyone is fighting to be the number one because each one wants you to have what they call believers. The believers have to then subscribe to their deity that represents that religion and then the hero would be the person that supposedly their deity sent down here so the deity of Islam will be Allah who sends Muhammad to come and give some message to humanity, so they say. Even though each person was actually sent to their own people according to their story. So what religion does is, is actually it divides people up. That's why I say that in order to have two sides, that's a division because it's a competition between two people. And they will say God is good and the devil is bad. But then when you start to ask questions like, why does God need to have, or each one of these religions, why do they need to have a deity and then have a bad component? Because they know that when you're dealing with the, the scientific world, which deals with positive and negative, it's a polarity where you will always start from one and end up with the other. So the reality is that religion is actually man-made but it leans towards you giving your energy to these disagreeable deities that are really camouflaging as, as being the gods or the, the good guys. But then when you start to look at what they're doing, is it good? Is it something good? Because when you look at religion and each one of this then has different denominations. So when you go into Islam, you have so many denominations. Like I said, you'll have like Sunnis, Shi'i, you have Ahmadiyya, you have, um, you know, Ansarullah, Nation of Islam, and they're all flavors that all have a different belief to the others. You go into Christianity, it's the same thing. You start off with the Catholics, the Jehovah's Witness, Seven Day Adventists, the Protestants, the Anglicans, Holy Church of Fire. And it's the same when you go into Judaism where you have, you know, you have Orthodox, um, what they call Jewish. Then you'll have like, you know, you'll have the Israeli church, the Hebrew Israelites, and they just keep dividing and dividing and dividing. So what religion does, right, we have a scroll. The scroll is called a birth of religion because religion actually is man-made. It's relying on the jinns. I mentioned about the jinns. If you go into Islam, they will tell you the jinns are disagreeable entities or spirits that, do you know what I mean, make you do bad things. And when you look at the word jinn phonetically, it also ties into the word jinn. Because remember, phonetically, the J and the G sound the same. Jinn is a drink, right? A spirit. That's what they call it, like hard liquor spirits. And those spirits basically make you behave and act in a certain way to then 
align yourself with this these disagreeable beings in religion that you're actually like giving your energy to so there are so many religions because they're based on tricking you to believe something that doesn't exist so they can have power and control over you your your life because like you're told that if you're good yeah good god yeah if you're good you're going to go to a place called heaven where you're going to get rewarded. And if you're bad, you're going to go to a place called hell where you're going to be punished. But it's like, why would a good God create a place called hell, right? And why would a good God create the devil? Because when we start to ask the question, where did the devil come from, right? they will say the devil was once an angel and this angel went bad. But when you start to look at the question, who has more power? Does God have more power than the devil? Or do they both have equal amounts of power? Or does the devil have more power than God? These are the types of questions that we ask people in the religious world because it doesn't make sense to say that the devil went bad, like as if God didn't know or has no control over the devil. And we say, okay, there's a lot of devilish men on the planet. There's a lot of sinning, murdering, killings, diseases, wars, etc., famine. And it's like, if this God really has the power, why doesn't he just get rid of all that stuff? Then they will say, he sends somebody. So he sends one of these heroes to come down here, like let's say Jesus, to come and be a sacrificial lamb to give his life to then remove the sin from the world, right? But the sin is still in the world. So there are so many religions because there are so many people that are confused. And the people are confused because None of the stories, none of the things they're telling you in religion are making sense until you start to stop and go, okay, let's analyze it. Why, why am I here? What's my purpose? And is this God a good person? Is he helping me? Is he actually able to do the things they claim in the books that they claim come from him? And you start asking questions like, is he a him? Why, why is it a him for a start? And why does he need to get other people to do his dirty work? Why did he have to send Jesus to come down and die on the cross, right? Which, again, the cross represents north, east, east, south, and west. So this is why when, when the devil in Job is asked, you know, where you been when he's going back into heaven, I think he's in Job, he says that I've been going around on the planet, yeah, up, down, to and fro, and that, that's the symbol of the cross. And then you have N-E-W-S, which gives you news. So every day you listen to the news, all you're hearing is the bad things that are happening in the world. And this, there's wars going on. This, this, this person is fighting against this person because of religion. You know, the, you know, right now, Israel is fighting against Palestine. When you go back to their beef or what the religion is, that they, why they're fighting, it goes back to trying to claim land, trying to say that, you know, our God is better than yours. So what religion does is it just keeps creating divisions amongst people, right? And the divisions are constantly growing because different denominations are made up every day. So every day there's a new religion. There's a new religion. And that's so that you can fall into this club, yeah, of a group of people who say, we think we're better than you. So our God says we can kill you because you don't accept or follow the same book that we follow. And then you say, but the book are written by men. Then they'll say, no, 
it was the hero of that book, right, that got that information directly from their God. Their God can't be seen. He doesn't show his face. So when you ask the question to people about, let's, let's, let's expose this God, right? Is, is he a, a thing? Is he in a place? Is he an element? Where is he? How far away that is? Can he walk? Can he talk? Can he be less than himself? These are the types of questions that when you're free from religion, when you're not like stuck in believing this God or following this book or agreeing to what everybody in that club agrees to, they start to say you're the problem. You are various names, you know, you're blasphemy, you're an infidel, you're heathen. All they do is call you names and you realise that you can't be good all the time because human nature is that you cannot just be one way all the time. So anybody that's telling you that just be good, like God, you just take out one O from good, you get God. And you take out the D from the devil, you get evil. And so it's a trick, yeah? There, there are so many religions because they're tricking you to doing the impossible. You cannot be a good person, what they call good, all the time. And you can't be evil all the time. So you're lost and you're confused. And the religions are away because they use something called, remember from division, right? The trick that, that is used is divide. Yeah, you must have heard the term divide and conquer. So I'm spelling that right. Divide and conquer. I don't know if there's an E on it, but anyway. Divide and conquer, that's, a, that's dealing with how they're able to conquer you because if you're divided, then you're easy pickings because there's more power or strength in numbers when you come together. So to answer that question again, why are there so many religions? There's so many religions because religions create confusion. Religions breed ignorance. Religions bring about war. Religions bring about separation. And, and the people that benefit from that are those that are in control of the religions. Because all you're doing is you're giving your allegiance to these deities, these extraterrestrials that are behind what people are calling gods or angels that are in these books. Because when you start to look at what these angels are doing, you have what they call agreeable and disagreeable. And they're always fighting and warring against each other. So each religion basically aligns with their deities. And if their deities say, we don't like you, kill for us, murder for us, you know, um, do sacrifices for us, then the people in those religions basically follow suit and it just creates these divisions. So um, you're literally getting bombarded and hit over the head because that's what they do. They bash you with this Bible or Quran or, you know, Talmud or any other books that they say comes from their deity. So religion is really a tool of the devil, right? I know it might sound crazy to people when they hear that, but religion actually brings more chaos on the planet, more wars, more fights than anything else. So you really do need to come away from religion. Stop relying on these jinns. Stop giving your allegiance to these beings um, and come out of that club and stop being partying or a part to it and being parted or divided so that you can be conquered. Um, I hope that's answered that question for you of what is religion. We have this actual fact number 16 called birth of religion because religion has a birth date, yeah? Religion didn't really exist in the form that you have it today, you know, 6,000 years ago. And when you start to go backwards, you're going to end up back in Africa, all right? Because everyone will tell you Africa predates all religions. And so you have to go back to a time when religion wasn't 
you know, practiced in the way that you have it today. So today, religions are just really a tool of the devil. And as hard as that might seem, if, even though you might start off in religion because you want to learn and be more spiritual, but when you get into that club, you're not really allowed to exercise your mind or ask questions. Or if you ask too many questions or the difficult questions, then you become, they will say, you know, a heathen, you're blasphemy. How dare you question God? Because they, you're, they're hiding behind this God that doesn't exist, that no one can see. And when you ask them, does God exist? They'll say yes, and you say, where is he? You know, and, and they don't answer the question. They'll say he's in heaven, and you say, where is heaven? You start to probe, and you find out that it's just these extraterrestrials passing themselves off to be God that can do anything, but yet they're very, very limited. Um, as I explained, you know, it, in, a, in a, another video, I explained that to be inside something is not the same as to be out. Yeah, you can't be inside a cup and outside of the same cup at the same time, um, as in, you know, having some water in the cup. So that shows you that God is very, very limiting, and you want to know the true God. And um, what we do in Wu Sabat, we give you this history, right? Because really you have to do the research and go backwards and say, where did this first come from? When was the birth of religion? Who were the people that gave you this story called his story? Because these men that are very influential, um, you know, they, they were the ones that passed themselves off based on the instructions they were receiving from these extraterrestrials. So, for example, you can see a picture of Hitler there, and Hitler was somebody that these extraterrestrials from the Pleiades constellation, known as, you know, the Pleiades, Pleiadians or um, the Ashtar command, they were using him as their representative or the hero on the planet Earth. And we can go through all of these different people and you will see that... Um, you know, they were basically just a tool to bring about the works of these disagreeable beings because whichever side you go on, you're just on the opposite side of the same thing, you know. So it's about you, yeah, coming out of religion. Now, when you come out of religion and start to deal with Wu Sabat, ah. Let me do it here. Start to deal with Wu Sabat. Wu, Wu Sabat is the future and it breaks the spell of religion and you can start to learn the truth. Yeah, the truth. And when you learn the truth, you make decisions based on correct, correct information. Correct, correct information. And then live your life in a peaceful, in formation, in a peaceful way. Um, and yeah, you're just liberated from religion. So the last scroll I want to talk about is this one, right? Which is called the guidance. This gives you the true guidance as it was passed down from generation to generation. The guidance, this is actual fact number 45 and it's called the guidance yeah so i hope that's answered the question um in terms of why is there so many religions because it's really about divisions and getting people to fight against each other and there's always a competition between one religion and the other everyone says my way is the right way and the other person says no mine is the right way and people fight and they kill each other for their gods and um we don't deal with that in wusabat wusabat is a spiritual science yeah there's a big difference from a way of life a culture and dealing with science as opposed to just believing because you can believe anything you want and be a hundred percent wrong so i hope that's answered that question <laughs>